learning objectives after studying this module students will be able to calculate the new profit sharing ratio understand the concept of goodwill learn the ways to calculate goodwill know the accounting treatment of goodwill understand how to create revaluation account know the adjustment of accumulated profits and losses understand how to deal with change in profit sharing ratio modes of reconstitution of a partnership firm what is reconstitution of a partnership firm as we know that partnership is an agreement between two or more people to share profit and loss of the firm the business can be carried on by all or by one on behalf of all partners any change in the already made agreement results in the reconstitution of the firm the result is the end of the existing agreement and a new agreement comes into existence with the change in the relationship of the partners of the partnership firm and their composition the reconstitution happens due to the following reasons like admission of a partner death of a partner change in profit sharing ratio a partner becomes insolvent or retirement of a partner etc modes of reconstitution of a firm the reconstitution of the firm happens in many ways admission of a new partner a new partner may be admitted in the firm when the firm needs finances or managerial support according to the provisions of partnership act 1932 unless it is otherwise provided in the partnership deed a new partner can be admitted only when the existing partners unanimously agree for it for example rohit and ronit are partners sharing profits in the ratio of 3 is to 2 on april 1 2007 they admitted anil as a new partner with 1 by 6 share in profits of the firm with this change now there are three partners of the firm and it stand reconstituted changes in the profit sharing ratio change in the profit sharing ratio among existing partners at times partners of a firm decide to change the profit sharing ratio between them let us understand with this example rajiv sanjeev and manish are partners in a firm sharing profits in the ratio of 3 is to 2 is to 1 with effect from april 1 2007 they decide to share profits equally as manish brings in additional capital this results in a change in the existing agreement leading to reconstitution of the firm retirement of an existing partner at times any partner takes retirement from the business due to some or the other reason like bad health old age or lack of interest in the business for example rajiv ravi and rishab are partners in the firm sharing profits in the ratio of 2 is to 2 is to 1 on account of illness rajiv retired from the firm on march 31 2007 this results in reconstitution of the firm now having only two partners death of a partner partnership may stand reconstituted due to the death of any of the partner provided the rest of the partners decides to continue with the business as usual say a b and c are partners in a firm sharing profits in the ratio 3 is to 2 is to 1 a died on march 31 2007 b and c decide to carry on the business sharing future profits equally the continuity of business by b and c sharing future profits equally leads to reconstitution of the firm admission of a new partner 
when a firm needs additional requirement of funds or managerial help or wants to expand the business then a new partner may be admitted to the firm to increase its existing resources according to the partnership act 1932 a new partner can be admitted into the firm only with the consent of all the existing partners unless otherwise agreed upon after the admission of a new partner a new agreement is constituted the new partner entered in the firm may have two rights in the business one right to share the assets of the firm two right to share the profits of the partnership firm for accessing the right in assets or in profits the partners are supposed to bring an agreed amount of capital in the form of cash or kind in the case of an established firm that is earning more profits than the normal rate of return on its capital the new partner is required to contribute some additional amount known as premium or goodwill following are the other important points which require attention at the time of admission of a new partner 1 new profit sharing ratio 2 sacrificing ratio 3 valuation and adjustment of goodwill 4 revaluation of assets and reassessment of liabilities 5 distribution of accumulated profits reserves 6 adjustment of partners capitals new profit sharing ratio when new partner is admitted in the firm then he gets his share of profit from the existing partners in the other words we can say that when a new partner is admitted into the firm then the old partners have to sacrifice their share of profit to adjust new partner but the share of the new partner is decided by the existing partners amongst themselves if there is nothing specified as the share of the new partner then it is assumed that he will get the share in their profit sharing ratio while admission of a new partner the profit sharing ratio between the old partners will change keeping in mind their respective contribution to the profit sharing ratio of the incoming partner for example amit and anil are partners sharing profits in the ratio of 3 is to 2 they admitted sunith as a new partner for 1 upon 5 share in the future profits of the firm calculate new profit sharing ratio of amit anil and sunith sacrificing ratio the ratio in which the old partners are ready to sacrifice their share of profit in favor of the incoming partner is called sacrificing ratio the new partner is required to compensate the old partners for their loss of share in the super profits of the firm for which he brings in an additional amount known as premium or goodwill goodwill with the passage of time an established business develops a good name connections and reputation in the market all these things help the business to earn more profits in comparison to a newly established business in accounting when we convert such advantages in the monetary value that is known as goodwill it is that asset which cannot be seen definition of goodwill goodwill can be defined as the present value of a firm's expected excess earnings or as the capitalized value that is attached to the differential profit capacity of a business any firm that earns normal profits 
or is incurring losses has no goodwill. Factors affecting value of goodwill. The main factors that affect the goodwill are as follows. Nature of business. A firm that manufactures high value products or having a stable demand can earn more profits and therefore has more goodwill. Location. If the business is centrally located or is at a place having many customers, the goodwill tends to be high. Efficiency in management. A well-established concern enjoys the benefit of high productivity and cost efficiency. This leads to higher profits, high goodwill. Market situation. The monopoly condition or limited competition helps an organization to earn higher profits and higher goodwill. Special advantages. The firm that has special facilities like import licenses, long-term contracts for supply of materials, well-known collaborators, patents, trademarks, etc. enjoy higher value of goodwill. Need for valuation of goodwill Generally, we need to do the valuation of goodwill at the time of selling the business. But in the partnership concerns, the need for valuation of goodwill arises due to following reasons. Change in the profit-sharing ratio amongst partners, retirement of a partner, admission of a new partner, death of a partner, amalgamation of partnership firm, dissolution of a firm involving sale of business, Methods of Valuation of Goodwill As goodwill is an asset that cannot be seen, so it is difficult to calculate its exact value. There are various methods to calculate the goodwill. Average Profits Method Super Profits Method Capitalization Method Average Profits Method Average Profits Method is based on the assumption that a new business will not be able to earn any profits during the first few years of its operations. Hence, if a person purchases a running business, must pay a sum which is equal to the profits he is likely to receive for the first few years as goodwill. The goodwill, therefore, should be calculated by multiplying the past average profits by the number of years during which the anticipated profits are expected to accrue. For example, if the past average profits of a business works out at Rs 30,000 and it is expected that such profits are likely to continue for another three years, the value of goodwill will be 90,000 rupees. Rs 30,000 multiplied by 3. Super Profit Method We have assumed earlier that in the initial years, a business does not earn profits through operations. Hence, the person who purchases the existing business has to pay in the form of goodwill a sum equal to his total profits which he is likely to receive for the first few years. But it is observed that the buyer's real benefit does not lie in total profits. It is limited to such amounts of profits which are in excess of the normal profit on capital employed in the same business. The excess of actual return over the normal profits is termed as super profits. For example, an existing firm earns 20,000 rupees on the capital of 1,80,000 rupees and the normal rate of return is 10%. The normal profits will be calculated as 18,000 rupees. 1,80,000 multiplied by 10 upon 100. The super profits will be rupees 2,000. Rupees 20,000 minus 18,000. 
the goodwill under the super profit method is calculated by multiplying the super profits by certain number of years of purchase. If, in the above example, it is expected that the benefit of super profits is likely to be available for five years in future, the goodwill will be valued at Capitalization methods. Using this method, goodwill can be calculated by two ways by capitalizing average profits, by capitalizing super profits. Capitalization of average profits. Using this method, the value of goodwill is calculated by deducting the net assets in the business from the capitalized value of the average profits on the basis of normal rate of return. This involves the following steps. 1. Find the average profits based on the past few years' performance. 2. Capitalize the average profits on the basis of the normal rate of return like this. 3. Find out the net assets by deducting the outside liabilities from total assets. 4. Calculate the goodwill by deducting net assets from the capitalized average profits. Premium method. When a new partner gives his share of goodwill in cash, then we follow premium method. This amount is shared by partners in their sacrificing ratio. If this amount is paid to the old partners directly by new partner, then no entry is being done in the books of accounts. But when the amount is paid through partnership firm, then the following entries are being done. The alternative method is to credit this amount to the new partner's capital account and then adjust it in favor of the existing partners in their sacrificing ratio. If the partners decide to retain the amount of premium in the business itself, then there is no need to pass any additional entry. If they decide to withdraw their amounts fully or partially, the following additional entry will be passed. Revaluation method Revaluation method of goodwill This method of valuation of goodwill is used when the new partner does not bring his share of goodwill in cash. In such a condition, books of accounts are increased in the accounting books by crediting the old partners in the old profit sharing ratio. When goodwill account is to be handled in the books of account, there may be two situations to handle. No goodwill appears in the books of account when a new partner enters the business. Goodwill is already there in the books of accounts. When no goodwill exists in the books of accounts, when there is no goodwill in the books of accounts at the time of admission of a new partner, then the goodwill account is created with its full amount of goodwill. The journal entry would be goodwill account debit to old partner's capital account when goodwill already exists in the books of accounts. There may be the case that the goodwill already exists in the books of accounts, then the adjustment for goodwill in the old partner's capital accounts will be done only for the difference between the agreed value of goodwill and the amount of goodwill already appearing in the books of accounts. There may be two conditions of journal entry. If the amount of goodwill is less than the agreed amount, goodwill account debit to old partner's capital account. If the amount of the goodwill is more than the agreed amount, old partner's capital account debit to goodwill account. Hidden goodwill. What is hidden goodwill? 
at times the goodwill is not given at the time of admitting a new partner in the business in such a situation it is to be drawn from the arrangement of capital and profit sharing ratio let us take an example x and y are two partners sharing profits equally with capitals of rupees 40000 each they admitted z as a new partner for one third share in the profit z brings in rupees 50000 as his capital based on the amount brought in by z and his share in profit the total capital of the newly constituted firm works out to be 1 lakh 50000 rupees rupees 50000 multiplied by 3 but the total capital of the three partners comes out to be 40000 plus 40000 plus 50000 which is equal to 1 lakh 30000 the difference is because of the goodwill that is 20000 1 50000 minus 1 30000 which will be shared by both x and y equally so their capital account will be increased by 50000 rupees each and total capital of the firm would be 1 50000 if the goodwill is not be raised then the z's account will be debited by 10000 and x and y's account will be credited by 5000 each so the capital of the firm remains same that is 40000 accumulated profits and losses adjustment for accumulated profits and losses at times a firm can have accumulated profits which are not transferred to capital accounts of the partners these are usually in the form of general reserve reserve fund or profit and loss account balance the new partner has no right on any share in such accumulated profits these are divided among the existing partners by transferring it to their capital accounts in old profit sharing ratio and if there are some accumulated losses in the form of a debit balance of profit and loss account appearing in the balance sheet of the firm revaluation of assets and reassessment of liabilities at the time of the admission of a new partner it is required to calculate whether the current value of the assets is shown in the books of accounts in case there is any discrepancy like understated or overstated assets the assets should be revalued in the same way liabilities are also shown at their current value in the books of accounts in case some assets or liabilities are unrecorded then these are to be included in the books of accounts revaluation account is prepared by the firm for recording these transactions the profit or loss on revaluation of each asset and liability is transferred to revaluation account and finally its balance is transferred to the capital accounts of the old partners in their old profit sharing ratio accumulated profits and losses entries journal entries for the revaluation of assets and liabilities for increase in the value of the asset for decrease in the value of an assets for appreciation in the amount of liability for reduction in the amount of liability for an unrecorded asset for an unrecorded liability for transfer of gain on revaluation if credit balance 
for transferring loss on revaluation. Adjustment of capitals. At times of admitting a new partner, the existing partners agree that their capitals should also be adjusted in proportionate to their profit sharing ratio. In such a situation, the capital of the old partners can be calculated on the basis of the capital of new partner. The capitals thus calculated should be compared with their old capitals after all adjustments have been made. After that, the partner whose capital is less will bring the remaining amount to cover the shortage and the partner who has a surplus will withdraw the excess amount of capital. Change in Profit Sharing Ratio Change in Profit Sharing Ratio Amongst Existing Partners Sometimes the existing partners of a firm decide to change their already decided profit sharing ratio without any admission or retirement of a partner. For some partners, the result of this is a gain of additional share in future profits of the firm, while a loss of a part of the same for other partners. For example, X, Y and Z were partners in a firm sharing profits in the ratios of 8 is to 5 is to 3. It is felt that X will no more be able to actively participate in the affairs of the firm. Hence, with effect from April 1, 2007, they decided that in future they will share the profits in the ratio of 5 is to 6 is to 5. This results in X losing. 3 upon 16 multiply 8 upon 16 minus 5 upon 16. Share in profits while Y and Z gaining 1 upon 16 multiply by 6 upon 16 minus 5 upon 16. And 2 upon 16 multiply by 5 upon 16 minus 3 upon 16. In such a situation, first of all, the loss and gain in the value of goodwill will have to be adjusted. This is done by raising goodwill at its full value in the old profit sharing ratio and then writing it off in the new ratio. Alternatively, losing partners can be credited and gaining partners debited with amounts without goodwill account appearing in the books of accounts. Any change in the profit sharing ratio involve adjustments in revaluation of assets and liabilities. Transfer of accumulated profit and losses to partners capital accounts in the existing profit sharing ratio and adjustment of partners capitals as per the new profit sharing ratio. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned in this module. Reconstitution happens in case of admission of a new partner, death of partner or retirement of a partner. A new partner can be admitted into the firm only with the consent of all the existing partners, unless otherwise agreed upon. A new partner may have the following rights. Right to share the assets of the firm. Right to share the profits of the partnership firm. The ratio in which the old partners are ready to sacrifice their share of profit in favour of the incoming partner is called sacrificing ratio. When we convert such advantages like reputation, connections and names in the monetary value known as goodwill, it is unseen asset. Generally, we need to do the valuation of goodwill at the time of selling the business. Three methods of calculating goodwill are 
average profit method, super profit method and capitalization method. Revaluation method of valuation of goodwill is used when the new partner does not bring his share of goodwill in cash.